did my own tech theater. Oh, give it up for Stage Left Band. Oh, I love you guys. Oh, seriously, y'all sound so. I just want to scoop y'all up and put y'all in my little lesby pocket. It's right here. It's here. That's that's the lesby pocket. You don't want to know where the straight girl pocket is. So, how's everybody doing? You good? Oh, I love you all. I'm good too. It's good to be back up here on stage. It's, it's been a little bit. Um, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit tonight about uh, a few things. Uh, mostly, I wanted to talk about the end. Um, yeah, I know. Most people think, oh, it's the end, and I know what you're going to say. I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, but, but you're so funny. Why do you want to talk about the end of things? Well, first of all, I say uh, I'm talking up here, so calm down. And... Uh, <laughs> Second, the end is not always bad. I mean, the end of one thing is always the beginning of something else. And it's been the end of a lot of horrible things like slavery and the Third Reich and certain uh, political agendas that will remain nameless. It, you decide which political things. But, uh, you know, the, the end of things always bring about good things. And uh, it, it occurred to me that I actually started a story the last time I was up here, and I never actually got to finish it. Now, was anybody here for the Anne Bonny, Mary Reed pirate story? Yeah. Well, I realized I didn't actually get to finish that. You see, I said that their uh, captain, Jack Rackham, was the douchest of the bags. And I said that I would get to that in a minute, but I, I realized I never did. You see, what happened was Anne Bonny and Mary Reed, for those of you who didn't know, were these two women pirates. They were, you know, out there on the seas doing the same thing the guys were, and most historians do believe they were lovers. You know, they were her, her, her. As I said last time, loading each other's cannons. You know what I mean? So, you know, they, they, were, they were doing their thing on the high seas. And uh, what happened was that one night, all of the guys were down below decks, drinking, smoking cigars, and lying about their sexual conquest. Don't lie to me, boys. I've been to guys' night. I know what you talk about, okay? So, they're down there. And the two women actually got up and tried to fight off pretty much the entire British Navy by themselves. Okay, they're up there fighting, and of course it's two people versus like a thousand whatever, they lost. So they got captured and the pirates got executed and tried to, like you do. But here's the beautiful thing. Okay, the women were held and tried separately. So the, the very day that Jack Rackham, uh, Anne Bonny's estranged so-called husband, was to be hanged, they, they let her see him one final time. Now prepare yourself, because this is the greatest breakup line in the history of ever. I don't care who you are and what you've done, what she did to this man, okay? He's in his jail cell, about to get hanged for being a pirate, okay? She walks up to him through the bars, looks at him, and says, and I quote, you can look this up, if you'd stayed on deck and fought like a man, yet ye'd not be hanged like a dog. True story. Damn, that is like, Right, burn the centers of America on standby. That is just the greatest breakup. Because that's literally the last thing that she said to him. He was hung by the neck. He was killed after that. That's, you can't beat that. You just cannot beat that story. So, but the, the kind of unfortunate thing is the end of Anne, Bonnie, and Mary Reed, it's kind of funny, actually, because on their trial, they're tried separately, and, and all these people are like, oh, well, they were pirates just like the men, and... And, and their, their defense is like, well, do y'all want to say anything? And they're like, no, we're good. The whole time, just ten, well, we're chill, we're fine. So it finally comes to their sentence. And the judge is like, well, uh, we're about to sentence you to death. What do you say? So they stand up, and again, kid you not, they announce, have pardon on our bellies and both claim to be pregnant. They got out of an execution with a tabloid headline. How great <laughs> is that? Now... Mary Reed later was reported to have died during childbirth, but Anne Bonny disappeared. No one knows. There is no record of her disappearance, of her release or execution or anything. She was just gone somewhere off in the Caribbean, somewhere, which I have been to. If you've never been anywhere near the Caribbean, go. It is beautiful. I went on a cruise. It was actually uh, the cruise ship, the Triumph, that, you know, back a few months ago kind of got... Yeah, whatever, we won't talk about it. But I was on there before it was the good ship Lollipoop, so it was nice. 
Um, I went with uh, one of my best friends in the world. I don't want to say her name because I don't want to embarrass her. So me and Amelia went on the ship. <laughs> and uh, I said I didn't want to say her name. I don't want to go into. So, yeah. And we, we went on these excursions on land in Mexico, which was really cool. And like the first one, we basically get on this bus and all we see is like water and the tour guide is like, hello. And we're like, oh shit. Uh, Pedro was leading this. So, you know, he, he brings us to this thing. We got to swim in this uh, cenote, I think it's called. It's like a sinkhole. Cenota, thank you. And uh, Amelia. And, you know. It, it was really cool, and the water was really nice, but the guy, the tour guide, the other tour guide, there was a couple, he's like, do not drink the water for you will get sick. And I'm like, oh, that's nice. So, and then some guy, like, kind of in my nose at one point, and somebody asked me, how does it taste? I'm like, it didn't go in my mouth. I'm not stupid. I didn't swallow it. Jeez. So, but I got to swim in that. And that was the only point that Amelia finally agreed with me that the Kraken was a legitimate fear, because this... <laughs> This sinkhole has like this giant dark hole underneath it that just goes God knows where. And the whole trip, I'm saying that the Kraken is a legitimate fear, okay? But she, that's the only time she agreed. Uh, but that was one thing. The other one we did, the guy's like, hello. So Antonio Banderas pretty much was the next guy. And that was when we zip line through the trees and stuff. And that was awesome. But the one thing I found out is when you go on a cruise ship, apparently children just go batshit native. Like they become little tribal bushmen. I, you leave them unattended on a boat and they just, I, they found a rabbit at one point and cooked it. I don't know where, how, it's just the weirdest thing. I don't understand. But yeah, the, the kind of only downside was, you know, it was in Mexico, international waters. So I, I couldn't call my girlfriend. I couldn't talk to her. And that was, that was kind of sad. But, you know, um, I'm actually, I came here tonight with another friend of mine. I don't want to say her name either because I don't want to embarrass her. So I came with Alicia. And <laughs> Alicia is one of these friends that I, I love her dearly, but I like to call her my shovel friend because she digs me these holes <laughs> that I, especially with my girlfriend, Alex. Like the, this one time we go to the movies and I have this large cup and I'm sitting there and I grab it and like the lid falls off. And so Alicia mentions, oh, well, that's why you're with Alex. You know, you, you can't handle big things. You can't handle big boobs. My stupid ass, with my love of my life sitting right next to me, I'm going, oh, I can handle big boobs. I can handle some big tits. I tell you what. <laughs> for, okay, I'm going to talk to the guys for a second because I look over and I see this. So I, I immediately like, okay, how am I gonna make a pallet on the couch tonight? Um, so, yeah, but, and my immediate, oh no, baby, I don't mean you. I mean, I love your boobs. I mean, you have perfect breasts. And, and I'm in the middle of a movie theater describing my girlfriend's boobs. <laughs> Complete strangers around us, like you do. So, and I believe that, what was that, Dark Shadows? It, it could have been worse, it could have been, uh, that was nice. So, you know, good times were had there. But, you know, as much as I, I love my girlfriend, I realize there is, like, a certain, like, number of things that kind of get kind of iffy. Like, when it comes with bugs, like, that's all her, that things change. Because I swear to God, there was one time that she came into the room and I had a wooden sword pointed at a wolf spider going, Alex! Alex! Get it! Because I don't play. I don't play with things that have eight legs. I just don't play around. <laughs> or things that have stingers and wings. I found that out earlier too. Because we're getting in the car and like this, this pterodactyl sized wasp flies down. <laughs> and I think it like shot me the bird at one second. So I'm like, I'm getting in my car, you know, like doo -doo -doo, and then mm, comes down like, oh shit. Uh, get it. <laughs> She's like, shut the door. No, and I realized after the fact, I pretty much left her in that car to die <laughs> because I was not, not gonna mess with that. So that was one of those moments. I was like, I love you, baby, on your own, soldier. I'm out. So, you know, that was fun. But, um, you know, I said I wanted to talk about the, the end of things, which is true, because it's actually been one year on this very day that I officially asked her if she would be 
mine if she would be my girlfriend. And yeah, you can, you can give it up. You can give it up. That's fine. Thank you. I love you, baby. But um, I realized that I could not get through this life with my friends like Amelia and Alicia. And they are very dear to me. But there was this one spot that I realized only one person could fill. And that was her. And that was when I asked her the end of all of my loneliness and, and pain and confusion and just the end of all this bad line of relationships that we won't even get into. But apparently I have come to me psycho bitch tattooed on my forehead in invisible ink somewhere. But fortunately that got wiped off, you know. And I realized honestly that that was the end of all that pain and anguish when I finally got with her. And that was the end of my being sad and alone and the beginning of the best experience in my entire life. So I wanted to share that. Thank you, baby. So that being said, happy anniversary, baby. Good night up on stage and thank you for listening.